I got an interesting take on mental strength. Because to me, all mental strength is, is the ability to refocus when you start having thoughts about quitting or doubt or maybe something is physically exhausting. So, for example, I'm not saying I'm a Navy SEAL or anything like that, but in my own life, if I'm writing a book, for example, let's take a simple example, and I have a thought that says, why are you writing? This isn't going to be good enough. So that's a thought that pops up and it distracts my attention, but then I refocus on, okay, let's take one step at a time. Let's move forward. So that's, in a sense, refocusing on another more positive thought that helps me move forward. But I can also just melt into the, let's say, background. So if there's a thought that pulls me away, I simply notice the awareness in my body, the presence or where thoughts come from, whatever you want to, whatever label you want to put on it. Kind of, it's kind of like focusing on the darkness within you. For example, when you close your eyes, there's just darkness and you can focus on nothing in a way. So it's about not taking your thoughts too seriously. So if you're out running and it starts be becoming difficult, now obviously if you, there are certain limits, you can't push your body endlessly, but let's say you tend to give up too early and you're running, it's becoming difficult, your mind says, oh, it's too difficult, we should just stop, there's no use, we're not going to be marathon runners anyway, so why push yourself? There's all, all this rationalization going on in the mind and all of these arguments for why you should quit. So mental strength to me is the ability to refocus in those moments and the ability or, or having the self-awareness of how your thoughts work, where you're most likely to be pulled off your path. Because some people push too hard. They're always disciplining them, themselves, trying to control everything too much. So in those cases, mental strength is re relaxing and taking a break. Because when you take a break, you're more creative. You have more energy to actually get things done, the right things not everything or what you think you should do. Instead, you do what has to be done and what you actually enjoy doing. So let's look at the, the other side, which is mental weakness. So you can think back to a time when you were mentally weak. What happened? It's probably something like you gave in to a desire or you ran away from pain or fear when you should have stayed or with the desire when you should have contained yourself. So again, that's, that's an example of you give in to the narrative that goes on within you. So you have emotions, you act emotionally, and bad things happen instead of waiting and relaxing and seeing how things pan out. Or you run away from fear or from the scenarios in your head. Let's, let's say you're anxious and you want to start creating and sharing with the world and helping the world, but you're afraid. You're afraid of what, what, what's going to happen, what will people think of you, so you're held back. And you're held back for as long as or until you don't care anymore and you start taking action anyway to see what happens. Because when you do take action, you realize that your mind doesn't know what's going on because it can't predict the future. Humans are inherently bad at predicting the future, so that means your mind is bad at predicting the future. And notice that I'm talking here about normal situations where you want to do something you enjoy, but you're held back. Or you feel desire to eat more when you don't really don't, that doesn't align with your long-term goals. So it's this these actions happening without you being aware, fully aware of them. So how do you do all this? How do you cultivate mental strength or the ability to focus on what you actually want to do, your long-term goals or doing something you enjoy? Well, first, it's not going to happen overnight because these are habits in your mind, 
in your being of doing things a certain way. For example, if you're lonely, maybe your habit is to eat something or to distract yourself by watching something or to have a glass of wine or whatever it is. So to start changing these habits, you need self-awareness. And this is why meditation is helpful, but it's not necessary. But it helps you become more aware in daily life. Be more, you could say, mindful. I like to use the word aware because if something is happening in the moment, you can be aware of it and you can notice the sensation going on in your body. For example, if you're alone, you want to take a sip of wine or have something to eat, you can stay with that feeling in your body. You can notice where it is, like if it's in your chest, if it's pulsing, if it's moving. What kind of thoughts come to its aid, saying, okay, it's fine to have a, have a sip, it's fine to eat something, it's not the end of the world to just do it once. So all of these things, all these stories, the emotions, the sounds work together. But if you can notice them, you can separate them, you can be present with them, they start breaking down. And it's not going to happen right away. Maybe it takes weeks, months, even years. Then the other side of this is to be kind to yourself. Because it's not about instant change. It's about having an idea or an intention of where you want to change. For example, maybe you sometimes want to have something to eat. It's not like you never can have something to eat or never can drink a sip of wine. Whatever it is. So it's more about being in control of what you're doing in a healthy and wholesome way. So mental strength, to summarize, is the ability to refocus, I would say. If I'm doing something difficult, there will be thoughts that say, you can just give up, you can just stop. And instead I refocus, no, I choose to do this because it's what's going to be most satisfying for me in the long in the long run. For example, for me, the exa- example that always comes up is riding, because I'm a rider. And there's all kinds of doubts when you're creating something, putting something out there, and I don't know if it's going to be good enough or not. And all I can do is refocus. Okay, I'm going to refocus on this, writing my first crappy draft, getting this chapter done, done, this paragraph, whatever it is, asking for help. So instead of getting stuck in the mind and in the fantasies, getting drawn away, and so I simply refocus and focus on moving forward one tiny step at a time. So that's my view of mental strength, the ability to refocus or to not take those thoughts too seriously. And mental weakness, I would say, is giving in to those thoughts, those narratives or stories that pull you away into a direction you don't want to go, or being emotional in the moment and making decisions from that emotionality and then being pulled away into a path that's not good for you.